In this video, I want to talk about another clever example file from the folks at Excelsis. Now, a little while back, I talked about a sample file from Andy Persons, which demonstrated how to create a progress bar in the FileMaker platform. And this is by far one of the more clever solutions that I've seen, and I have personally used this in some of my work at RC Consulting. And so this solution, while not quite as useful as a progress bar, I mean, that thing was just epic. The double click solution is quite clever, and it's quite educational to sit down and actually go through it because it's not entirely obvious as to what's going on, at least if you're a beginning or intermediate developer. If you're an advanced Kung Fu master, like some sort of uh, Jedi Knight, right, Yoda? If you're a Yoda developer, you can skip this and move on, but if you're not Yoda, then you might want to watch this. So first off, in the FileMaker platform, of course, we have buttons all over the place, and when you click a button, uh, everyone's been trained to click the button and the buttons work. And that's the way buttons work everywhere. You press the button and they work, right? Of course, on Windows or on the Mac OS, things like that, you get these situations where you're in the user interface, the desktop interface, and you'll get an icon or some sort of application, and one click selects it, but two clicks opens it. And that brings up an interesting user uh, experience situation where you might want to replicate that here. Now, of course, a single button would indicate that it opens it, but what if you put actual icons on your user interface and you wanted to train your users that two clicks would open them? Or you had some other reason that you needed a double click. Well, there's no double click functionality in FileMaker. I've been around the FileMaker platform for like a billion years, right? I'm 25 now. And of course, at this point, you'd think that double click would be there, and of course it's not. And I've been using single click so long that I even forgot what double click was until Andy showed this to everyone. I was like, holy cow, Batman, this is cool. And then I'm like, well, where would I use this? I've been trained to use single click so long that my brain is kind of warped in the same way that using, you know, uh, touch controls on the iPad has kind of warped my head. I've had to rethink about swipes and taps and things like that. So, of course, uh, we have the single click here and the double click, right? So while I can show you the solution and it's pretty easy to implement, a bigger part of this is where you might want to use it and how to use it appropriately. So let me just caution you on that. So let's dive into the technical parts since I've warned you about the business end of it. Uh, I'm going to go into layout mode and simply state that you've got a button and a single script and that's all it is. It's very simple. The button calls a script called, uh, simply enough, double click and it passes a script parameter called get script name. Now the get script name function does exactly what you think it does. It gets the current script that is running. Now it does what you think it does, but it's a little misleading, at least it was for me. And I've been around a long time, and so I was thinking I knew exactly what it would do, and <laughs> this is a little different. So get script name gets the current script name that's running. So I say, okay, that's cool. And so what happens is, is that this is the script right here. I'm going to fire it up. And uh, so the script runs. And what happens is, is that there's a value of 0.3 that's set in here. And what happens is when you double click it, you double pump the mouse, you bang it twice, the script runs. And it comes down here and it executes a pause right here for the interval that's set up here. And that 0.3 can be set to anything. You could even set it in a preference setting in your software, but it's set to 0.3 here. And that works pretty well with my click speed, but some people click things slow and fast and whatever, you could always adjust it. It's arbitrary. So it pauses right here. And then after point three, it continues on and says you've done a single click. So if you click it a second time, the script is run again. And you go, well, mm, what happens there? And this gets into something I really haven't covered too much, I guess, in my training curriculum. And it's, it's a subtle thing, and we used to take more advantage of this back in the old days when FileMaker was much more limited. But I want to point out a couple important things. Something that's here, but we kind of ignore it. And that is that when we click a button and we tell it to perform a script, this screen is basically the default settings. We say perform a script, we specify the script, we optionally specify a script parameter. In our FileMaker Pro training videos, we've been learning all about this. And sometimes we pass a parameter and sometimes we don't. What's interesting is that we haven't talked too much about these two settings here because really, for the most part, they're incidental. 
So this option right here, of course, is changes the icon of the arrow as it goes over the top of it. And this option right here pauses any existing scripts if they're executing at the time you press the button. So your new script will execute, and then any previous scripts that happen to be running will resume automatically. Of course, the other options are here that you can uh, resume, exit, or halt. And very rarely do people mess with these settings right here. Uh, the other option, of course, that I've seen people use, or I've used myself, is that you halt any existing scripts and then you would perform this new script. We leave this in the default condition right here, which is that you pause the existing script. By pausing the existing script, you basically stack it into the call stack. And once again, this means that it's going to perform this new script while pausing the previous script. And once this newly called script is complete, then the previous script, which was queued up in the call stack, will have the opportunity to complete on its own. So the first time you press it, it calls and it runs it. And it's going to pause that point three. The second time you press it on your double click, it's going to call it again. And so it's going to basically run that script twice, but the second time through, an interesting result will happen. The second time through, it's going to come down to this if statement, and it's going to say get script parameter, does it equal get script name. Well, get script name is double click. Now double click could have been hard coded, but the folks at Excel Assist actually built this script to be transportable and easily copied and pasted into your own database. But just keep in mind this right section over here could have been hard coded to the word double click. What's a script parameter? Well the script parameter is the value that we pass to it. What we pass to it? We pass to it the script parameter right here, which is get script name. And this is one of the little subtle things. There's two subtle things going on here. One is the fact that we told the existing script to pause. The other part of it is the script parameter that we pass, which is get script name. The first time you click through, no script was actually executing at that time. So the script parameter that you actually pass the first time through is blank. There's nothing there. Get script name, and there's no script running. It's nothing. The second time you click the mouse on the double click, the double click script is already running and it's at that point three pause. Now keep in mind, this script is running on the first pass from the first click of the mouse on its own accord. And when you click the mouse that second time for that double click, that script parameter that's part of that second click is going to use the get script name to capture the running script name. All this function does right here is report the name of a script that is already running. It's not going to report the name of a script that we are trying to start. That's super important here and it's something to get really caught up in. As we specify within this script step right here, we specify the script name and then we use this optional script parameter, get script name. We assume that we're capturing the name of the script that we're calling. No, 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 no. Get script name as a script parameter is not going to capture at this point the name of the script that we are trying to call. This is going to tell you the name of a script that's running at the very moment before this script begins. The script hasn't started yet. So when you press this button, it's going to say, any scripts are running? Yes or no? And if so, what's the name? Then start the script. So it's important to understand the sequence here of what happens. It doesn't start running this and then grab the value and then pass it. It gets this value first, then it activates the script up there. It's very important. The sequence here of the script parameter being gathered and then passing it to the script is very important. In this way, the second time this script runs, it actually gets a value right here on the script parameter, which is double click, which then matches the name of this script here, double click. Double click equals double click, and then you see, hey, you've got a double click. So hopefully that makes sense. It's very important to understand that script parameters will evaluate first before activating the script. This whole demo by Andy Persons is completely based on the subtle execution and timing 
of the way script parameters interoperate with script execution. And he's very clever in how he pulled this off. And so hats off to him and Excel Assist for once again a very clever demonstration. It also makes a very good educational demo to understand the timing and execution of how scripts are called and executed and how those affect the script parameters and how they're generated and passed in to the script themselves.